Welcome to The Shots Pod, where we discuss all things Oldershot Town. I'm Liam Flint. As always, I'm joined by my dad, Howard Flint. Dad, a couple of good home wins in the last few weeks. How are you feeling? It's been a good week, Liam. A six-point uh, week can't be bad, can it? So, no, very positive. Yeah, very positive start. We'll reflect a little bit on that in the coming minutes, but let's introduce our guest. So, we're delighted to have with us Oldershot forward, Hadi Gandor. Hadi, how are you doing? Thanks very much for your time. All good. Thank you for having me and uh, looking forward to getting into it. How are you feeling? You've just come from training, right? So is it a relaxing yeah, afternoon uh, for you now? Yeah, no, I'll probably, probably just relax. I mean, I've, as I said before, I'm fasting, so just take it easy. But the training was tough because obviously I didn't play enough minutes on Tuesday. So the boys who didn't play enough go through like quite a, not rigorous, but tough session just to get us, get our legs loaded mm. enough to, to get going if we're needed on Saturday. Yeah. And Dad, I know you've been at our recent home game, so it'd be good to just see what you saw of Hadi as well when he came on for his cameos. Um, Hadi, you mentioned, obviously, you haven't had loads of minutes since you've come back from loan, and we will talk about, obviously, your, your Farnborough loan in a minute. But how has yeah. that how's that been? I mean, the, the atmosphere's been great, got the two wins, you're now part of the squad again. Um, how good is it just to be back and being amongst that environment? Yeah, no, I mean, winning in football is priceless, you know, whether you're on the bench or playing. I mean, it just, there's always a feel good factor around the place. Um, you know, coming into a team that, you know, we've been winning pretty much most of the season. So it's actually harder than people think to come into a team that's, you know, on a winning streak because you think to yourself, you know, what can you add this and that? But, once you get into the game and into the flow of it, you kind of just let your game do the talking. Um, but yeah, no, really good, really good um, feel around the place and smiles around the place, which is what winning does. So we just need to stay humble. And as the gaffer always says, take it the next game as it comes. Don't look any further than that. And that's, that's what we're all doing. So, yeah. 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 Great results. And dad, we, we made some predictions, didn't we, in our last pod about the last 10. Are you currently doing better than me on, based on those recent home games? I'm sorry to tell you I am. Yeah, so um, <laughs> it's it's the way it goes. But we'll see how it evens out after the 10. So, uh, yeah, Hattie, we we made predictions for the last 10 games at our last yeah. pod. And um, uh, I think the, the, the first one was Oldham, Liam, and you predicted 1-1 one, one, uh, and Ooh. I predicted 2-1. Ooh, almost, almost. Yeah, close. But a two nil, we'd take a two nil, wouldn't we? That's that's yeah, uh, yeah. Rob's. any day. Uh, but then you got you got closer on Tuesday because you predicted three one for uh, a, a shots win against Ebbsfleet, and I predicted they'd be tougher. I mean, I think they were quite tough. We might talk about that, but um, I, I said one one. So um, I guess uh, I guess you were right on the second one. I was right on the first one. Uh, so we're probably all square. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll accept that as we move on to the, the remaining <laughs> fixtures. Need to start predicting red cards because, Hadi, we keep racking up red cards at the moment. I didn't actually know why Hadi got sent off because I was warming up at the time and I just, I was kind of confused. I still don't know, don't know why, but I don't know. Mm. We move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if, um, if you look at the highlights, it's quite interesting. Um Obviously, it's it's done now, and I don't know whether the club will um, will appeal. But um, the two of them go for the ball, sort of midway between halfway and the penalty box. They go for the ball, and Polian actually is grabbing Hadji's shirt, the num yeah. number nine. He's grabbing his shirt and then kicks out, but doesn't make contact. It's a sort of it's a sort of sideways kick. Um, Hadji then gets back into position, ball side, and um, uh, and he kicks out. So both of them actually... Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a... I saw it, but I didn't want to be too controversial. But yeah, I mean, it was a give and take between a forward and centre-half. Yeah. I, I would have given nothing, but... Yeah. You know? My, my personal... I'm obviously biased, but my personal view, because I was there, I think it was either... Well, I think there were three options. It was either let it go, uh, which I don't think was going to happen. Second option, I think, was both of them got red or both of them got yellow. Because both of them were actually, you I know, think both yellow would have been a fair. Um, yeah, fair I, I agree. I agree. I think that would have been uh, 
that would have been the right, yeah. well, for me, the right thing. It was quite a tough game for the ref, actually. I, I thought she... Um, it was tough and the crowd, the crowd were a bit, but understandable. <laughs> I would have been, I was the same on the sidelines. So. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, it was a yeah. tough, tough one for her, tough baptism for her. I don't think she's refed at shots before. And uh, I think it just got a bit close to being overwhelming, you know, because yeah. the, the, once players know they can take liberties, um, you know, a few hard challenges, not penalised, a few things let go, um, it, it nearly boiled over, I think, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was a pity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, obviously, you being there, how do you feel that Danny Searle was received? Obviously, manager coming back to the shot. So there was a bit of talk about it before the game. Did you notice yeah. anything, or did people just get on with it in the end? Yeah, he was. I, he was warmly. I mean, obviously, I wasn't in the director's box or anything like that. But he he was warmly um, received, I think, and and certainly there was no no negative reaction that I saw. And I was there quite early. Um, and at the end of the game, when the players went round and thanked the fans, um, obviously the Ebbsfleet guys went to the Ebbsfleet fans. When Danny so came in, there were one or two um, smiles up at the director's box. Uh, I don't think it was his own directors he would have been smiling at because they, they obviously lost. But um, I, th I think there are one or two friends that Danny's made. And, you know, he was he was a good guy. He just didn't have much success on the field, but I think he's a, a guy with integrity. Um, so it was, it wasn't awkward. I don't think, I hope, I hope it was okay for him. Mm. Yeah, we all, we'll see. But I think, yeah, it was always going to be a bit of a, a talking point, but then once we went from one nil to two one up, I think most of us felt that that was going to be then one way traffic, which was great. Um, mm. Hadi, let's just get into obviously talking about your, your season. Yeah. So obviously you spent a little bit of time, mm on loan at Farnborough, um, which I'm sure you'd agree was a successful time. I mean, you weren't yeah. there for that long, but you yeah. yeah, you got in a good goal scoring form. How did you find just that experience of having to go there and the few games you did have? What was your sum up of it on this side of it? I honestly, I had a great time. I mean, I was coming off a, a tough surgery. Obviously, I'd snapped my hamstring tendon in my debut against Wheelstone. Um, so I was coming off like a, a rigorous rehab schedule and I just wanted consistent minutes just to get my body back into it. You know, I know what I could do. It was just about getting my body in tune again. And, um, yeah, it was, it was honestly great. Everyone there welcomed me brilliantly. The boys were great and, um, just, just felt like relaxed to go do, do what I wanted to do always, which was to score goals at a good level. And, mm -hmm. um, Obviously, six goals in nine appearances isn't too bad. Um, probably could have had one more against Torquay, but the keeper made a good save, and I should have scored. But um, honestly, no, it was a it was a great experience, and obviously, it's not too far from Aldershot, so um, the travel wasn't bad at all. You know, get, getting to games, it was honestly it was a great experience, a great loan, and I honestly had a great time. I, I always had a smile on my face. Um, hmm. I was enjoying my football and yeah, it was great. Uh, what was it like being um, at Farnborough, which is literally just, you know, three miles away from Aldershot and, and quite a rivalry between the clubs. How, how was it to be uh, so close and yet totally different club? To be honest, I didn't, I knew that the two clubs were close. I wasn't, to be completely honest, fully aware of like the magnitude of the rivalry. Um, I didn't really feel it, which is, I guess, credit to the guys at Farnborough when I went, I didn't really feel like there was a rivalry. I was welcomed by by everyone, and um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was great. But um, in terms of the travel as well, I mean, it was per it was a perfect scenario for me because I was also training full time at Aldershot, so um, and training at Farnborough whenever they had training. So it what the loan was like, kind of like the perfect loan for me. I mean, I got the best of both worlds, still training with the group who were doing so well and then going to train with Farnborough and play competitive minutes um, at Farnborough. So it all worked out really well. I mean, in terms of the rivalry, yeah, I mean, like I said, I didn't really know the magnitude of it, but I think credit to everyone at Oldershot and Farnborough, I didn't feel that I did something mm. wrong, I guess, or there was <laughs> anything there was anything there until after, but yeah. So when, when Aldershot went down six divisions because of um, insolvency um, and we were reformed in 92, um, 
Farnborough, Farnborough were in the same division as, as Aldershot um, in the mid 90s. And so there was a lot of rivalry when, when those league matches were played. And also the Hampshire Cup, they've met a couple of times there. Um, so that, that's where it comes from. And it's mostly with the fans rather than the players. Like Hattie was saying, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure the manager there and the players there probably didn't even mention it or think about it. But, yeah, no. but it's, it's present in the fans. The fans definitely see Farm Oldershot fans definitely see Farnborough as, as, as quite fierce rivals. There were one or two occasions where Farnborough were above Oldershot in terms of league status because we went down six divisions. So you can see that um, we were the minor club and yet we had the, the major history. So that's where it comes from. And obviously we haven't played recently because Farnborough dropped down a couple of divisions and we went up to the conference as was. Right, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. This is where I show my age that I wasn't actually around in those <laughs> mid nineties. Yeah. Yeah, you and you and Hattie are mere boys, really. You see, it's yeah, it's those yeah. it's, it's those that know what happened way back, you know. And, yeah. And the, the rivalry was, was I mean it was good it was good natured, but we didn't like to lose. And it's like woking, you know, Hattie, you'll be aware of the woking rivalry that we have. Yeah. We're really yeah, not I'm fully aware of that. Yeah, I'm aware. We're of really that. not happy to lose to Woking at, at yeah. anything. Tiddlywinks, darts, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel that. I think in my lifetime, anyway, and this might be the same for Hadi. I think Farnborough has just not been at the same competitive level. So I think that's where the, the little bit of disillusionment comes from. In that I don't ever see Farnborough actually taking points off older shot. I don't see them close to being the same league, but yeah, you're right in that historically hmm. that, that has been the case, but older shot have been on top for a long time now, haven't they? Yeah, they've been, they've been in, in a league above, although Farnborough have been in, um, you know, National League South um, for, for a little while and um, they, you know, they, they've, they've wanted to move forward, but they've had financial problems as well. So, you know, there's been challenges there. And I think Tommy, did Tommy Willard have a spell there as well, had he? Uh, he did last year. Yeah, he was there for a yeah. month. If I'm yeah, not that's right. Yeah. So, so we've got probably got good links, you know, yeah. in terms of directors and managers, and we've got good links really, and probably trying to help each other, which is great because because it obviously helped you, Hadi. You know, six six in nine is is yeah. a really good return, and um, no, it was, must... it was a massive help. I mean, I mm. can't really say it enough because my career was kind of I didn't really know because I had quite a few bad injuries. Um, one when I was at Charlton. So that kind of really helped me, you know, cement my spot in terms of what I could do. I knew what I could do, but it was about executing it competitively because it's mm. all well doing it in training, but it doesn't mean anything, you know. Um, you need to mm. kind of have it on record in a competitive game. So no, that was a massive, massive uh, help and massive loan for me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, great. Yeah, Adi, I was just going to say, so obviously six in nine, do you think the reason that you started banging in the goals was simply just because you got a run of games, which, as you've said, injury-wise, you've not had much of in your career at all? Or was it more yeah. environment, teammates, just good timing? What was it that got you in that form? I think, obviously, I've always kind of told the people around me, if I get a run of games, I will score goals. And... Um, I got that run of games and I, I did score goals. Obviously, it's not guaranteed. I mean, I could have had two goals in nine games. But um, yeah, look, I for sure, 100%, it was the fact that I was getting the run of games. I had that extra 10, 15% energy and a lot more confidence that I knew I was going to get a certain amount of minutes to go put myself in the positions to score. And a couple of my goals were came in the like 90th, 90 plus minutes. So it's just... The fact that I don't know how to explain it, the mindset is different when I knew I was playing. Um, it just gave mm. me a 20, 25% boost. And every single game, even though we were going through 80th, 85th minute, I'd always feel like I'm going to get a chance, I'm going to get a chance. And thankfully, like one out of two chances that came, I took. So um, the environment was also a big help. I mean, the boys did in the build up phase of our play, did look for me a lot and try to play through me. And then when my bit was done in the build-up, I just focused on getting in the box in between the, the, the posts and that's where you score goals. So it was a mix of mix of mm. both. I mean, obviously, you have to factor in luck. A um, couple of times the ball fell to me in the right spot. Obviously, I had to be there, but um, 
yeah, a lot of stuff went into that, but yeah. Yeah. So would you say that was almost the ideal scenario? Because I think dad and I would look at that and say, okay, you've gone on loan and then we pulled you back really quickly when you're just starting to obviously motor and get in form. Then I guess from your point of view, your ultimate game and you want to play for the shots, right? So for you to yeah. be brought back early, is that actually a good thing? Or would you rather have been left at Farnborough for the season to really get going? How was your mindset? It was a difficult one. Uh, they actually, on my last game, uh, was Chelmsford. I scored against them. Uh, I was actually not meant to play that game, but I had a call from the gaffer and Terry Brown on Sunday. They said that um, being recalled, I literally, I just asked if I could play that game because I felt like such on a roll that I wanted to play. And I was fully aware that going back to Oldershot, I wasn't going to walk into the team. I wouldn't expect to anyway because the boys were doing so well. I wouldn't have liked to anyway. I just wouldn't have felt right. Um, mm. But I knew I wouldn't walk into the team. It doesn't make sense. So I just wanted to get that one more um, game under my belt. And uh, I got kneed and split my chin and got it stitched up. That's why I came off at half time. But um, it's a bit of both. It's It's happy it's kind of you're happy because you went on that loan to show your parent club what you can do um but at the same time you know how prices price of scoring goals is for a striker so you don't want to yeah. stop scoring goals and you're aware that you're going to get less minutes which means less chances but ultimately like we're going you know hopefully going for a, for a playoff spot so you want to be you want to be fighting for that in your career like um, you want to be trying to get into the EFL with a club like Aldershot. I mean, the fan base isn't as big as I thought it was when I was on the outside. When you're in, you realise it's actually a lot bigger than where we are. Um, I know there's league history there, so um, it's a bit of both. I mean, I'm never happy when when I don't play. I mean, you ask my dad, he bears the brunt of my anger. So, um, mm -hmm. But I'm w well aware of the standard the boys have put up the whole season and I don't expect to just be given on a plate here you go here's 90 minutes so yeah frustrating but also at the same time it was what I worked for over those two months so a bit of bit of bittersweet uh feelings there yeah that's exactly what I thought I thought that's why I posed that question because yeah you can see it as just oh I'm sure Hadley was delighted to come back but actually I'm sure you were enjoying your time just playing, scoring goals. So I always think yeah, actually, like I said, I mean, yeah. Like I said, I mean, when you go and you're scoring, you believe every game you're going to get a goal. And it mm. just happened for me that I was scoring like most games. And it gives me like an extra 15, 20% energy, motivation. But football's not just like straight line up or down. I mean, my last two years have been pretty much only down. But um, yeah, like, I mean, it just playing every game is you just I don't know how to explain the feeling it's just um sometimes I get more energy when I've played like three games in a week for a Tuesday game than let's say if I I'm going to be on the bench on the Saturday I'll, I'll have a bit less energy just it's just a mental thing um yeah. but you kind of that's the career and profession we're in you have to get yourself up for it and you have to stay ready for whenever you're called upon so mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think it's something we forget, Dad, isn't it? The mentality of those guys who are maybe sat on the bench, not always starting. We just assume as fans they'll be ready, they'll be 100%. But it is a lot of mind game, isn't it? It's a lot of mentality that we don't see. Yeah, I think um, well, you and I both know, and, and Hattie's a professional footballer, but you and I both know, Liam, having played sport, that, that the mental side of the game is just as important as the physical um, because... You know, you've got to be switched on, haven't you? But yeah, I think the way the gaffer has been playing or the way the squad has been used, and if you think about it, um, someone like Kwame has barely started a game. You know, he, he started a few, but very, very few. But he's very, very consistently brought on, um, particularly the last 15, 20 minutes, plays a different role. And the team actually plays differently, Hadi, doesn't it, when you have Kwame on? You know, there's, yeah. there's a subtle, subtle difference to the way the game's played by the shots. Um and, and there's others, aren't there? You know, Theo hasn't played for a few games now. He, he got a very short thing on Tuesday. Um, and we, we had Theo on the podcast. And, and you know, it's, it's quite a challenge to think I'm not a definite certainty. It must be quite difficult sometimes to keep your spirits up. 
It is. Um, I mean, there's no one. There's no one really who's nailed on, but there's a rough team that you you know about is going to play. And um, but yeah, yeah, like like you said, the mental aspect is is not easy. But because we're collectively fighting for a big goal, you you have to. It makes it easier to stay sharper and on it as the games come and as training comes because you know when you're when or if you're called upon you're going into like a into a, a battle i mean we're going for the playoffs every game is intense you have to be ready you have to stay ready it's, it's no excuses so as tired as you are or as demotivated as you are you have to have to get yourself to a level to to see the boys through a game or to get the boys mm -hmm. back into the game so it's uh yeah mm -hmm. and i think while we're talking about Farnborough dad, we can't let you off. I think we need to out you for your your Farnborough versus Aldershot history here. Um and just have a little little chat about that. Because many people won't know listening to this, although you've been an Aldershot fan your whole life, you were born and raised in Farnborough. You got many ties there. You do love the place. <laughs> so do you want to tell us a little bit about how you managed to be an Aldershot fan? I can. Well, I mean, I was I was born in Farnborough, raised in Farnborough. The interesting thing for me is that um, my dad used to take me alternately, Addy, to uh, to Farnborough Town and to Aldershot. So we, we'd always go on a Saturday somewhere. And of course, Farnborough used to play at home alternate weeks. So they'd try and avoid the Shots weekend at home. Shots were a, a bigger league club then. Yeah. Um, so Farnborough at that time played in South Farnborough, so um, at, at a place called Queen's Road, which was literally a park. It, it's it's still there. It's it's a park. So if you can imagine a pitch with a rope around it, that's the standard. And they were they were well, oh, I don't know how many divisions below. Aldershot were in Division Four. That's the existing League Two, really. Um, so dad would take me to Farnborough and it was literally park football, but Farnborough were a good side for their level and they kept getting promoted. And, and then the next week we go to Aldershot and it was just the fact, the size of the ground, the, the number of spectators, and I guess just the atmosphere, the, um, the theater of going to a bigger ground rather than standing behind a rope and having a dog, you know, chase you. Um, it was, it was that. Uh, so I've always been a shot and yeah, I have no ill feeling towards Farnborough, but um, it's home for me. And then, of course, I took my son. Um, I have a difficult son as well, Hattie. So um, <laughs> I took my son and actually, and Liam knows this, last weekend I took my grandson. So he was a shot on Saturday against Oldham for the nice. first time. So it's it's that old thing of your dad, dad making big decisions for you and then you sort of go along <laughs> yeah. with it. <laughs> you know yeah, how that feels. I do. I <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. So there yeah. you go, Liam. That's why you are a shot and not a Farnborough supporter. Okay. So basically, we're glory hunters. Is that what you're saying? Bigger stadium. <laughs> that's yeah, it. I, I, I think so. It was. You know. You know. When you're seven, eight, and it's just the the uh, the enthralling nature of of a crowd going ooh ah or you know that it's a new experience if you've not been before. And my grandson hadn't been to a a league game before um i said did you enjoy it and it was like you could see his eyes were everywhere all those people and the shouting and the obviously the stuff on the pitch the goals i said what did you like best and he said we won and that was <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that's why i'm a shot and why you're a shot and you always will be <laughs> yeah no no pressure whatsoever there to keep it no. going don't you dare support bournemouth or anything like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, living in a town with a Premier League team, it's a temptation, but yeah, yeah why yeah. not? Yeah. I see that. Yeah. yeah, well, so far you've done well, Liam. So so far it's been all right. Yeah, we've got there. And Hadi, just coming back to you, um, you you've been out on loan a couple of times. You've had some injury issues. Do you enjoy that different experience of being on loan? Um, you know, the change of scene, change of manager, or would you really just love to be, you know, if you could be granted a wish, would it be, you know, a starter for Aldershot and um, forget the loans? No, 100%. I, I want to have a place that I can call call home. I mean, the loans of um, when I was at Charlton, I went to Maidstone and won yeah. the National League South with them. And then I signed my deal with Maidstone, but that's when my injury started. Hmm. Um Obviously, I'd, I'd want a place that I can call home because I feel that's when you can just forget all external factors and just focus on your football. 
which is kind of what I did when I went to Farnborough. Because it's so close to Aldershot, I could just focus on solely my football because I knew my career was at a crossroad because of the the severity of my surgeries that I've had. Um, but in terms of the experience of loans, it is it is invaluable because you come across different types of players, different types of managers, different dressing rooms. So whenever you go on loan, it is hard because if you don't know anyone there, you have to kind of start from fresh. You have to earn your respect in a way uh, on the training pitch and on the pitch on a Saturday. Um, so you do gain, you do gain invaluable experiences. And um, I wouldn't be who I am today as a, as a man in general if, if it wasn't for all those loans because... As I said, you're exposed to different people, different types of people, different managers that demand different stuff, demand you to act a different way in and around the place. So, yeah, no, I would want a place I could call home, as I said, because it allows you to, to flourish and focus solely on the football. But the loans, would I would I change it? Probably not, no, because I don't think I'd be who I am and have, you know, I'm only 24, but um, I feel like I do have, quite a bit of experience now in terms of injuries, dressing rooms and um, different types of players to be around. Yeah. 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 And and then we've spoken to Josh, Josh Stokes and um, a word with Frosty last week as well. And, um, you know, the Aldershot are a club that are going to be uh, seeing players move on to higher levels, aren't they? I mean, Josh already has, but, um, you know, we've got, we've got Lauren and, um, you know, people like, Glover and we've got Harfield and others who I, I could easily, you know, a lot of you could play in League Two, I think now. So, Liam, it could well be that that Hattie has a chance to um, force his way into the front three, particularly if someone like Lauren Tolage moved on early next year or in the summer. I, I know he's got a contract extension. Um, so there, there are opportunities for Hattie, hopefully, if he can stay injury free, do you think? Yeah, I think I think that's the beauty of it. Obviously, Hattie, I'm sure that's what you're your mindset is as well. But obviously at the minute, you're right, it's quite a crowded front line, isn't it? And there's lots of talent. There's also Kwame, who's been a good super sub when he's come on. He's got some important goals for us. So it does mm. feel like if you can obviously get on the pitch, remain part of the squad, that at some point, and this always is the way it goes in football, isn't it? You'll get a breakthrough moment where you then all, I don't know, you'll get the winner or you'll score a hat-trick. You'll do something in yeah. the cup. And then all of a sudden it shifts. And yeah, we've maybe got a couple of players who are going to be heading off. Um, and I think, yeah, it's a positive for us fans that we've got great depth. So we look at it and go, oh, Hadi's on the bench. We've got Kwame on the bench. They're going to come on. You know, we've got five or six great attackers. But obviously for you, I'm sure you'd love to actually just be on the pitch. So I'm sure yeah, you're looking a bit I more mean... long term, aren't you? And you just want to be in and around, keep doing things well, and then take your opportunity when it comes. Yeah, exactly. No, just doing the right thing. Like you said, um, I never thought I'd be someone who has to stay injury free because it never came. And when it comes, it just comes all at once, uh, despite all you throw at it. But I've changed a couple of stuff with what I do. I've focused more on, I've changed my training in the gym a bit to more like strengthen my hamstrings in, in different ways and kind of managing my load and when to put load through my legs, when not to. I, I saw a nutritionist to see if I'm lacking any any nutrients I'm taking. Um, so I obviously my blood test gave back some results that showed that I'm lacking some sort of nutrients. So I've been taking those supplements. So I'm trying to leave no stone on turn to just stay healthy and um, be ready to be picked whenever the gaffer needs me and to come on whenever the gaffer needs me. So Although I'd want to play, um, I'd, I'd like to say I earned my spot back on the bench with my loan. So hopefully I can keep going and fire in a few goals um, to seal the playoffs and then go from there, hopefully. Yeah. Is it easy to stay positive? Because there, there are labels thrown around with players like, oh, they're injury prone. And then yeah. you just see that that kind of follows people around. Are you someone who actually you're not going to allow that to be part of your future no, I'm, I'm and you're not, quite good I'm at not, leaving it yeah i'm not i'm not too fussed about about that i mean it is what it is you i'm i'm pretty realistic i mean I, I am injury prone basing off my record so it's fair if people want to say that but i know what i put into my body and how much i work and people can say what they want i mean in my last stretch with farnborough i think i played saturday tuesday saturday tuesday Saturday, Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, and I played 
like the whole game. So yeah, I've um, I've had that run of games where I I've shown that I can sustain my my fitness and my my performance throughout a tough schedule, and that gave me a lot of confidence getting through that phase um, of games and scoring. So yeah, it's not something I pay too much attention to. People can say what they want. I mean. I'm realistic, as I said. I am injury prone as of this season. Maybe next season I play the whole season. Then I, suddenly I'm not injury prone. So, mm. yeah, yeah. Certainly, we'd hope that Hadi, that would be yeah. our that would be our hope for you. Just tell us about the atmosphere, Hadi. Just the last few weeks, obviously the EBB has been jumping. We've had some good results. Just how much have you felt in your short time being back at the club? Just the the feel good factor, the fan support. Is the EBB a good good place to be at the moment? Yeah, it's uh, it's top to be honest. Uh, even just like because I'm on the bench, you look at the East Bank and you can hear it, and the noise is is um, very very good. I mean, it does spur you on as a player, and I know the boys when they're playing, it does give them an extra ten percent. So the mm. atmosphere in the dressing room and in the stadium is great. I mean, we feel we feel the support whenever we're on the pitch. Even when I'm going out to warm up, there's a lot of great shouts from the fans and you know everyone claps for you it's it's a great atmosphere and hopefully hopefully it can it can continue that way because we need we need the support for the last which i'm sure it's it will happen the fans will get behind us but it really does give us an extra few yards an extra bit of pace um an extra determination to get into the box it, it's it's honestly really good so yeah it was just picking up on that. It was really good on Tuesday. I thought, I mean, I was in the crowd, but I thought it was really good. In years gone by, Hadi, obviously you're you're relatively new to shots, but in years, certainly the last four or five years, when, when shots had got a goal down at home, um, there'd often be a sort of, here we go again, sort of feel, you know, yeah. a slight deflation. And that's understandable, isn't it? You know, you're, you're, you're expecting to win or hoping to win, and then they go and score. But there's been very little of that this season once we've got into a rhythm. Um, and I think around me anyway, the expectation is, oh, OK, Ebsfleet has scored. Um, I mean, they played really well for the first 20 minutes. I thought yeah. that you know, they, they they imposed their game on the shots, didn't they? Yeah. Um, but once we'd equalised, I think there was a sense of, um, right, let's go on and win this now. And um, that's quite new because for four years previous, we've been flirting with relegation or have been relegated and saved at the last minute. So um, so you're doing well to enjoy that atmosphere because it hasn't always been like that. No, I'm a, I'm a fan myself. So I know I know what um, being in the stands entails. So it's it's all yeah. understandable. But yeah, as you said, you know, when Epsuit took the lead on Tuesday, it's, we just stay calm. We know, we know we'll get a chance. We're confident in what we've worked on. So it's just mm. about staying calm and... Uh, yeah. 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 Well, it was exciting. I thought it was, I thought it was really good. And a, a lot of people around where I am, you know, it's like, um, it's an exciting season and yeah, we've got a goal down, but we're going to score four or three or something, you know? Um, so that, that's a really good, again, talking about mentality, it's really good for the fans to be so positive. And, um, we just need Liam to, to move from Bournemouth to, to Farnborough and, um, <laughs> Then he'd, then he'd be in a place to experience it himself. <laughs> yeah. One day you can see the script that we're going on here. Yeah. The narrative we're trying to paint. Um, but yeah, maybe one day. When the beach when the beach moves over to Hampshire, maybe I'll go over there. But for now, Dorset's where it's at for me, I think. Yeah, of um... course. So, Hadi, what can we expect as fans from you? I, I'm very conscious. I've seen... Um, like I've seen quite a number of your cameos you know the times when you have been on um but you know tell us a little bit what what could the fans expect from you when you're a fully fit and b given an opportunity uh well in terms of my build-up play i love doing both i like linking up with my midfielders or dropping slightly a bit deeper to get it off one of the center halves and building through there i also mm -hmm. don't mind running the channel stretching the game i love to do both and i can do both um i like scoring goals uh, obviously as my last loan spell showed um i can be that striker who is kind of just a fox in the box goal yeah. scorer i mean if you look back on my goals most of them have been all one touch goals apart from my last against chelmsford so um just little half chance or sniff a goal and goal hopefully um so yeah that's that's what i think i can bring to the table 
Hmm. Liam, Tommy was talking to us because we, we spoke to Tommy earlier, um, Hadi, and he was talking about the the way that he recruits very carefully. Um, there's, there's, there's encouragement for Hadi there, isn't there, that, that it isn't just grab a player, but actually Tommy and his team with, with uh, Jamie, they really do some background work, don't they? Yeah, I think that was one of the most helpful things I've heard, actually, just to see the breakdown, A, from Jamie Hedges, to hear about why we recruit the data element of it, how many games these guys are actually going to, like it's such a, um, a major process. And then, yeah, just Tommy saying kind of the messaging that he gives to you guys. Um, and I think that's such an encouragement. I think the fact that you even brought back from your loan um, must be encouraging that they've seen that in you. They think yeah. you're going to go straight back into the squad. And hopefully, obviously, that encourages your development. Um, I'm always interested. What's what's Tommy said to you, Hadi, since you've got back? Has he got certain things that he's saying? These, this uh, he is what always, I want to be in training. Yeah. Uh, training is um, obviously a non-negotiable. I always have to give. Obviously, I'm not a... A starter so I always have to give a lot more which I'm, I'm doing I think I'm doing well in training <laughs> maybe the gap mm. has, to, has to answer that but um, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah I mean it's mainly about when I'm on the pitch what he wants me to do um, sometimes he doesn't like when I start my runs too wide or take my runs too wide he wants me to wants my runs to end up with me facing the goal basically so let's say if I'm making a run into the channel he doesn't want me to run too too wide um, yeah whenever you do link the play, he just wants you to kind of, you're a striker, so get in the box kind of thing. Um, in terms mm. of on the recall, I don't think, uh, we didn't really speak much. I knew and I'm sure the Gaffer knew as well. Like I'm coming into the last 10 games. There's not really much to speak about. I know where we are in the table. Um, just basically don't say anything and train and whenever called upon, do your job. I, I knew that was the scenario and I know Obviously, he knew that was the scenario, so it was it was a pretty smooth um, transition. And when I asked them if I could play the last game for Farnborough on the Tuesday, they were very very open to it and calm with it. So it was a very smooth uh, process. So, Hadi, with with just ten to go, well, less than ten to go, handful of games left. What are you thinking individually is going to be the ceiling for the shots? We talked a lot about the playoffs in the last few episodes. Obviously, had a, a great couple of wins. Um, in your mind, is it playoffs just has to be where we need to be if it's going to be a successful season? Have you decided that in your mind that that's what's acceptable? For me, for me, yeah, because, well, obviously I can only talk from an outsider point of view for most of the season. But the standard the boys have put up throughout the year, it would be a, a real shame if we don't have that as our main aim with eight to go, I think. Um we have to aim to to get into the playoffs. Uh, it will be be unfair on the boys who've kept the standard so high throughout most of the season to aim or I think settle for less. But at the mm. same time, if you look where the shots were last year, it is a huge, huge step up already. Just basing off, for example, the FA Cup run as well, and how close um, you know we were to relegation last year. It's a huge jump already, but we've come so far. And there's mm. so little to go that we have to have to aim um, in, to finish in the playoffs. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, that would be yeah. the aim, playoffs. We're, yeah. yeah, we're confident, Dad, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. I, I think um, we've spoken earlier, Hadi, on this podcast that um, we, we haven't had too many bad runs. You know, like poor old Altrincham have had five defeats in a row. They've just put it right against York, haven't they? But um, yeah. You know, we haven't had that. We haven't had any sort of four or five run defeats, which which is a unusual because most clubs have a sort of dodgy yeah. time. Um, so I think now we're down to was it nine games? Um, no, less than that now. Um, seven games. We yeah. we're in a place where um, yeah, I mean, if we win our home fixtures and draw the away fixtures, for example, um, I think we're pretty well certain to be in that top seven. Um, so if we could win them all, that would be even better because you're yeah. then pushing on second or third which means you're in the second tier of playoffs you know you you, you the knockout stage happens and then you're into the second tier before yeah. you have to play um but i get a feeling this team would love to play as many rounds as it needs really because the, there's a lot of um athleticism in the team isn't there yeah i mean when you enter the playoffs you want you want the knockout phase straight away because yeah 
we know the playoffs is almost a lottery. I mean, anything can happen. No, no team is guaranteed um, a win or a, I mean, we always see it so many times that the teams that aren't just aren't favorites in the playoffs just do yeah. great and end up going up. Um, I'm talking throughout the leagues, not only um, yeah. national leagues. So, no, I mean, I think we would obviously want to be in the higher tier of playoff, but anything, anything will do. Just let's just cement our spot in the top seven, and then we'll take it from there. I think a lot of teams would want to avoid us. Actually, do you agree, Dad? That I think with our form at the moment, especially the EBB, yeah. I don't think you'd want us in that playoff first round. No, I, I agree. I mean, if you if you listen to Danny Searle's uh, post match after Ebb's fleet, I mean, he he was he was generous about the shots, and I'd expect him to be because he's that sort of guy. But he's also an ex manager, and now he wants Ebb's fleet to survive. And he was saying, you know, this is a tough place to come, and the front three. You know, a lot of people have been talking about our front three, but to be honest, it's the whole team, isn't it? Because you know, Ryan Glover's been outstanding, Frosty's been outstanding since he moved to wing back. Um, I think I think Hadji has been great. Um, you know, you just go around the team and you say there's been such a good, consistent season that I, I don't think anyone would want to play. You know, Bromley, we should have beaten Bromley at, at, the, at uh, the EBB in the league. I don't think they'd fancy playing us. Barnet, we beat at the EBB. Um, they might have the advantage of the home tier, if a home tie if it's the second tier. Um, then who else have you got? Oldham, we've just defeated. Solihull, we've got a chance of defeating before the end of the season. Halifax might make it. Um, and then Altrincham, you know, they might sneak in, mightn't they? So, no, I don't think anyone would fancy the shots because we do score goals. Um, I think it's just a question of can we eradicate the mistakes? We, you know, we can't afford to go down to 10 men in the playoffs and that yeah. sort of thing, really. Yeah, Adji. You might be on a centre back. <laughs> Hadi will be a centre back if we keep getting red cards. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd have to we'd have to sort of um, you know say get your head on it, Hadi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you say you want minutes, or well, you can start in the defence. <laughs> I'd rather sit on the bench. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no, a pretty I, physical. I it's a pretty physical league, though, isn't it, Hadi? You know. The, yeah. The, the teams, there's no soft touches in this league, is there? No, it's it's tough. I mean, even from my spell at Farnborough, I mean, I like bruised my rib. I had a stitches in my chin. I know what, I mean, I, I started off in two or three leagues, I forgot, below the National League now. So I know what non-league is about and it was kind of my breeding ground. So I've always mm -hmm. known how physical it is. But this league, the National League, um, is kind of a mix of both because there is really good quality and there is the the dirty side of the game so it's really it's honestly really hard yeah so yeah well if you look at some of those players for Oldham I thought Oldham were very physical you know we last Saturday had he um but if you look at some of their players people like Hogan you know he yeah. got promoted with Stockport um What's that? Three seasons ago, um, you know these are experienced league pros that you're playing against week week yeah. in week out. Um, you know, on on Saturday against York, you know they've they've got a couple of players who are really experienced. You know, five hundred appear uh, not five hundred uh, two hundred and fifty appearances for York, um, and York previously were a League Two team, yeah. so they're they're not you know they're not pushovers. So I think physically it's it's quite tough really for you guys. Yeah. We do have one final sort of question for you, which is a bit worrying, which is why you're a Leeds United fan. Uh, just like you want Liam to be an older shot fan or you made him into an older shot fan. My dad uh, pushed me to be a Leeds fan in my youth and took me to games like you took your grandson the other day. Yeah. And I, I first went when I was six to Ellen Road. So it was Norwich uh, at home. Um, and yeah, I uh, just... Ever since then, like you said, that like you kind of just get infatuated by the crowd and the noise. Yeah. It's, li it's literally electric. Um, yes. And you just, you kind of just fall in love like straight away. And growing up at school, everyone was always Chelsea, Man U, Liverpool. I was always like six, seven years old, Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. So it was a bit weird. Mm. But um, I'm so glad I stuck to it. And my dad drilled it into me that there's no other team. So yeah. Yeah. It was tough. Um, 
being a Leeds fan for many years because when I was when I first started, we were League One Championship for yes. I don't know nine ten years. So it wasn't easy, but I stuck through. I was actually going to more games when we were in League One and struggling in the Championship than I did when we were in the Premiership. And now, just because I'm unable to now, and even when I am able to go, it's just I'm just too tired because of all the football we're playing and the traveling we're doing. So I was actually going. I'm opposite to you guys. I'm not a glory hunter. I was going when we were. <laughs> when we were um, League One and struggling in the Championship, but no, um, that's why same same story as you guys. Tradition. Yeah, it's really it's really strange, isn't it? There's so many of us that that have this inbuilt thing of um, you know it's given to us by our parents or our you know, grandfather or whoever it is, and and it's almost like you can't dare go against it, and yet actually, I mean, Lynn supposedly supports Chelsea, but I I you know I I believe. <laughs> I believe he'll grow out of it and get to a place where he sees sense. But you know, I'm hopeful. No, don't wait. We ought to talk about Lebanon, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we, Liam? <laughs> yeah, we ought to talk about yeah, Lebanon you... and, and uh, the international honours as well. Yeah, while you just consider the fact that I will, yeah, always be living in Bournemouth, I'll ask an international question. Um, yeah, Hadi, let's just <laughs> leave you. We talked a lot about obviously aspirations with the shots. Um, yeah. But yeah, where does Lebanon fit in the picture for you? Do, you? do you still desire to get more international caps? Is that still on your radar? Yeah, 100%. I mean, 100%. I was out of the picture for, to be honest, if I hadn't had that surgery um, in August, first week of September, actually, I probably would have been in the frame if I had done well to get called up to the Asia Cup. But I knew that my time was a wrap then because I had three, four month rehab schedule. So I knew that was out of the question, but it's definitely in my sights. I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. And I know they're watching me at all the shots. So um, it's definitely something I want to, I want to get back to. I mean, initially when I got called up, I was at Charlton and kind of worked against me because I got called up and I only made one appearance in South Korea where I played like 10 minutes and then I didn't play for like four or five games and I was leaving Charlton. And we had an EFL trophy. We had EFL trophy at the time, which I was going to start in. Um, and I obviously, I lost my spot to, uh, to Mason Burster, who's at Chelsea on loan at Sunderland now. But just to show you that that's just how football works. I mean, I got called up for my country, but I lost, I guess, my, um, my spot in Charlton's first team and on the fringes, I guess. So. It worked against me, but it's it's a dream, and I really I'm really proud to be Lebanese, and I want to represent my country at the highest level, and hopefully, hopefully we can get to the World Cup in 2026. I mean, we have qualifiers I think next week, but I don't think I'm not called up for that. Hopefully, I can be in the frame for the next qualifying rounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you're only 24, so that's the beauty of it, right? In that you've still got yeah. such a long time to make that dream a reality, haven't you? And things like the Asia yeah. Cup, World Cup they're huge career defining events. So it's an amazing goal to have, isn't it? That many players yeah. don't get to even think about. Yeah. I mean, when I made my debut, I was obviously delighted. It was in South Korea. So played against some top players, but it was a great experience. But at the same time, I knew like I was kind of in a sticky situation with Charlton because I wasn't playing enough and I was going back. I was like, basically like, what's going to happen? I mean, I was so happy, but at the same time I was like, what what what's going to happen because i knew i was on the periphery now and i got sent back to the 23s just just no reason just because i wasn't in the building when called upon for international duty so it was a bit of um happiness and extreme anger and sadness at the same time but no one can mm -hmm. take away the fact that i played for my country it won't it won't be the last i'll be back um but hopefully sooner rather than later but yeah no it was a great honor and i'm proud and the dream is obviously to to represent my country at a major tournament yeah yeah, yeah it's a great and you know there's something to be said Hadi, for for being in a successful team um you know you, you may not be having loads of minutes at the time at the moment but um you know the people people watch successful teams don't they it sounds a yeah. bit weird but they, yeah. they don't watch they, they're not as interested in failing teams you know we we it's it's part of the human dynamic, I think, that we love, you know, hence the glory hunter. I think that's why my son's a Chelsea fan. But, um, 
you know, I've I've stuck with Aldershot through thick and thin because I I love the club and I've got those memories. But it, you know, you're in a useful, a really useful squad, and I think I think you will be watched. I I, I said on a previous podcast there were there was a scout that I recognised from a, a championship team at the shots two games ago, um, who was obviously just scouting because you know there there were two good teams yeah. on the pitch. That was the Bromley game. So um, he was looking, obviously, at the Bromley players as well as the Shots players. But I'm sure he was looking at our front three uh, yeah. amongst others. Um, so, you know, to be in a successful team, if we can make the playoffs, if we get promoted, uh, it, it, it can rub off on you. And I think our hope, Liam and I would definitely hope, you know, we can see more of you on the pitch and um, no, fingers you know, wish, wish you well for, for the future. And hopefully Thank stay you, injury, Thank you. injury free as well. Yeah, no, hopefully. hopefully. Have you got a? It's maybe the wrong question, but have you got a contract um, uh, on the table yet? Are you discussing Not it? Not yet. The... No, um, I'm just taking it day by day. There's nothing um, discussed as of yet. Wait I see. think it's a it's a pretty intense period now, so it's understandable to just, I mean, push that stuff to the side and focus on what's now. So, yeah, I guess you'll see it. You'll see if anything happens on on the Twitter and all that. So. Sure, sure, but, yeah. 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 I'm in a similar conversation with my son about whether his contract continues. So don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just remember mm. he's in control, Dad. All right. I can yeah. delete you you're... from this call at any time. <laughs> you're the CEO. I'm I'm just like Hattie, running up and down, chasing <laughs> chasing the ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we do wish you well, Hattie. And it's been Thank great to talk with you. And, um, Yes, we'll wish, we'll hopefully see you around the ground when we're in the playoffs.